There is an amazing tool that my mother, Karen McLeod, passed it to me. There is an amazing tool that my mother, Karen McLeod, passed to me. And that tool was the power of perspective. If I had to pick one thing that my mom gave me out of the many gifts, I would say perspective is the primary one because it informs all of the others. Growing up with my mom was nothing short of a wild ride. We had a lot of husbands, we moved to a lot of towns, we rarely stayed in one house longer than nine months, sometimes a couple weeks. I was just thinking the other day about a school that I had gone to for just three weeks. I was thinking about this school called Wilsey Cobb in San Francisco and within less than 24 hours, Jonathan and I drove by it and I told him the story of what it was like to go to that school and make friends being one of the only white European descent people in the school at that time and what it was like to make friends and finally make friends, and be loved and then just be uprooted. It was a strange time. Sometimes we'd even register me for school. I, there was a school I registered me for when I think it was 14 called Galileo in San Francisco and never even showed up to the first day. So it's been an adventure for sure. And that is what I wanted to share with you today, the adventure. That during all of these huge, huge, huge changes, sometimes descents at night, not knowing where we're going, my mom would say, this is a great adventure. What shall we make of it? Where shall we go? How will we be? What will we wear? What we will, will we call ourselves? Sometimes she would fascinate me for hours, letting me invent a new name at a new school and a whole new look, and we'd go looking for the new look. I know now it's one of the ways she kept me entertained as the rest of our life went on, thinking of all the logistics in the background that she was dealing with. But that perspective of the great adventure is something that has shaped every single thing I've ever done and is helping me now as we continue to move through the COVIDian era uncertainty and also navigating the recent loss of matriarch of our family and the, the art, one of the primary art matriarchs of intentional creativity. So today I wanted to come share the idea that we could approach things as if they are a great adventure and how different it is if we, we can keep saying, wow, we're going to hell in a handbasket. What the heck is going to happen? I mean, everything, there's no planning. We don't know what we can do. Or we can say, it's a great adventure. Who, what character am I going to be in the great adventure and how am I going to show up as mythic in the adventure? When my mom, when the first day that hospice came in December of 2020, when hospice asked my mom, well, what seems to be the problem? And started asking her questions about how she was eating, what vitamins she was taking, what medications and bowel movements and such. And my mother said, well, the problem is I'm having an identity crisis. And they went on to ask her more medical questions. And she's like, what does that have to do with an identity crisis? And it was just such a poignant moment of that perspective. To my mom, she was losing herself. The medical parts were very secondary, although primary. And then the real part was the loss of identity. So as most of you in the Intentional Creativity community know, I have just completed a 30-day vigil, what I called rematriation, a remothering time for myself, becoming my own woman and engaging in the journey that I started in December of finding my mother instead of losing my mother. And so I want to just take this moment to thank all of you in the community for standing for me, with me, holding space with me. I feel like there were millions of prayers surrounding me and the incredible Musea Collective working together to make sure that I could actually take that breath. And I thank you, all of you. During that time, I spent a lot of time in intentional creativity. I, I went to uh, intentional creativity like an addict goes to their fix. And I'm raised in a family of addicts, so 
I know how that goes. You go to it hard as if it's the thing that will make the most difference. And I covered three notebooks and this is toward the end. This is actually May 1st. An image of intersecting feminine images starting with the baby. And do, do drawings like this and drawings that really create a sense of connection. Some are lyrical and beautiful and others are sassy and others are a little bit sad and um, some are a little bit more fierce like this mythic queen sort of showed up toward the end and, and then the, these faces inside of this. You can see that. So these are the kinds of drawings that I did and would draw for hours. And so my rematriation, which is really like a reseeding of the original seed into the community or ground where it comes from. I come from creativity. And so I spent my time writing, painting, drawing, looking at the sea, sitting, talking with Jonathan, uh, reading my mom's work, um, crafting a obituary eulogy the way that I would want someone to do it for me, and just being present and practicing being connected. And being connected with energy because the matter is gone, but the energy has just changed form. You can imagine her just crossing through across the gossamer veil back into energy and that energy is still real even though it's different. Practicing relating with that energy and not so much as mothering energy but as influencing energy, perspective, energy, adventure, energy. And I would have these just like moments where I'd feel like a wave of a message. The ultimate message I felt like I received during this time was freedom, finding freedom, and how it cause I am for freedom within my own life. And that was her core personal value as well. And then not so long ago, just in February, we also said goodbye to spirit warrior Carmen Baraka walking into her future. And on the night that she passed, I had a candle lit and the door, op the you know, screen was on, you know, open and the whole window was open. And I literally just felt this gust of wind come in and I heard the message, you get to choose your own stress. This is your choice. So I feel like from these two matriarchs in our community, choosing where I'm stressed and where I'm not and choosing my freedom. So it's with Carmen's message of choosing where I'm stressed really informed how I approached the stillness and presence of rematriation. So this is my entry point back into the community. Some of you said you missed me. Some of you said you felt me the whole time. Some of you said I never was gone. Some of you said you traveled with me. I love that you all had different experiences of being with me. And thank you for loving me and us and for caring about these absolutely phenomenal women. I just want to thank my team again for all the work they did. You know, when I said I was going to take 30 days offline and they're like, wait, but we're, we're opening the Red Thread Training for Intentional Creativity Guide June 1st. How are we going to do this without you? And I was like, well, I'll help get things put in place and then I'm going to be gone. And I can't do anything, but I'll do stuff in May. So we set up musea.org backslash red thread for a wonderful seminar series called Way of the Red Thread after the, the title of the book that you can join me for. And that's the way I want to spend time with you in May and Mother's Day to be connected to you and share um, from the teachings of the red thread. I feel like I'm having a bit of a subdued and 
somber tone, even though I'm so excited to be with you and back. I just feel this level of oh, grounded presence, not heaviness, but just like, wow, and how blessed I feel as I practice learning this energy of connection with my mother's essence. And then how much that's how we are on Red Thread too, that so many of us have not ever met in person um, across the whole Musea community. I mean, there's upwards of 30,000 people and I've met, you know, a small fraction of those over my time. And so the fact that we are connected across the quantum, we've been practicing this quantum connection for quite some time. So it is with that that I extend a red thread to you, community, Cosmic Cowgirls, Red Thread Cafe, Musea, all of you in various circles and places that you're working, my friends. And I just wanted to come and say hello and thank you and to read you a poem. Um, and this poem is dedicated to Amber Samaya Gould today as we reconnected after my rematriation, she quoted a part of this poem to me and I thought it was perfect today if I can get through it without crying. It's a poem I wrote called After 1000 Broken Vows and it was a breakthrough poem. I had spent um, two years of really intense grief and this poem was my breakthrough poem. It literally was the breakthrough. It broke me through. And so depending on where you are and what you're dealing with and how you're feeling, what you're navigating, I invite you to write your own 1,000 Broken Vows poem um, as a way to just burst yourself through because intentional creativity, writing and drawing, painting, dancing really helps get you through. And I was using intentional creativity like that at that time, but I feel like I was being more passive, like I think I'll paint or I think I'll write let me see if I feel better. But with this cycle, even though I was so peaceful, I literally just like went to it like the dog on the bone. I was like, I am going to gnaw on this using intentional creativity and get the flavor out. So after 1,000 broken vows, after 1,000 broken vows, we will rise again. I promise. Surrendering to the mystery of knowing and not knowing, we finally understand we will not do everything we say we will. We will not do everything we say we will. This confession should feel like a relief. We have transcended getting it right when we finally get it that we won't. We can let ourselves off our own meat hooks when we finally know integrity comes and goes. Perfection is overrated. One fine day in the middle of the night, our truths lined up single file and went out for a midnight spree and then didn't come home and we woke up truthless. Then it is time to begin again. Better that the heart be broken a thousand times than never open at all. My job is to wipe the fevered brow of our restless creative musings, not demolish the hospitals that house our sicknesses. Though I do dream of revolution for breakfast. This is my truth. I have no idea what is going on. I only know that we must create and keep on creating no matter what before the mending with red thread, first the breaking open. Val 1001, I have been waiting for you. Thank you so much, dear ones. Blessings and love. May love be at the center of all our choices.